Happy Thursday to you, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great training day. Today, I want to talk about a technique that we use here at Taming the Wild, and it's called setting the behavior. Setting the behavior. Making a, any sort of static position, like a sit, a down, a stay, place, rock solid. Rock solid. And the cool thing about it is that we take advantage of a natural reflex that we have. It's called opposing reflex or opposition reflex. And it's way, way cool. It works great in those static positions, works horrible in movement. And it's why we don't use it for movement. But to kind of give you a little example of what it's like, come on over here, Evan. So Evan, come on over here and hop right here in this little camera frame over here so everyone can see you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Evan hold on to the end of this leash here. Move in here a little bit more. There we go. I'll move back here. Okay, so now I'm like a dog. Stay. Stay. So I got two dogs staying here. Okay, so that means don't move. Don't move out of that position right there. So he's like a dog in a sit. With him being told that, I'm just going to grab add a little bit of pressure on this leash. Now, what are you doing, Evan? I'm going to pull back just a little. So Evan is pulling back. In other words, he's fighting to remain upright. He's fighting to remain right there on that spot in that position. He's fighting. It's not a snap. It's not a jerk. It's not a correction. It's simply using his reflex, no thought given, just falling back and settling in that position. Free. Good job, Evan. <laughs> way to go. Way to go, buddy. Okay, so... Opposition reflex can really help you create that rock solid sit down stay place. It's uh, really handy to use in training. But the biggest uh, misperception that we have when it comes to doing the setting the behavior is people think you're correcting the dog. They, they scratch their heads and go, why are you trying to pull the dog off the cot? Why are you trying to pull the dog out of the set? Why are you trying to pull the dog out of down stand and so on and so forth? Why are you trying to do that when the dog's simply trying to comply? Well, here's in short, so a little biology one-on-one. There's two types or two categories of memory. There's explicit and sometimes known as declarative memory. And that's what you take advantage of, that particular memory, when you're doing a behavior or teaching behavior for the first time. That's the memory that in humans is responsible for facts and for remembering events, but only for a short time. Case in point, I had to use explicit memory to remember to say happy Thursday and not happy Friday or happy Wednesday. I had to really think about what is today's date? What month is it? When I write my description, I have to think about what day this is in the 365. And if you were to ask me, Brian, what did you have for dinner last night? If I told you I had spaghetti, now a week from now, you ask me, hey, Brian, I'm going to ask you on the Facebook live post there. What did you have for dinner last Thursday. There's a better, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, especially with me, there's a better and even chance. I won't remember that I had spaghetti. Okay, so that's explicit or known as declarative learning. Really short facts and events that you compile real quickly, kind of like memorizing something really fast, kind of trying to learn it here. And then there's this thing that happens when the memory becomes more permanent more lasting when you don't have to give a conscious thought as to what you're doing. And that's known as implicit or procedural memory. Yeah, that's the thing that's responsible for you riding a bicycle. You're not having to give it a conscious thought. Someone asked me, Brian, what did you have for dinner? I have to think. Before this video came on, I had to think. What day is today? I had to think of that. It was a conscious effort. But procedural memory allows us to drive a car and text. I know it's against the law, but you still see a lot of people doing it and they have that ability because they're not having to think about all the other functions that their body's doing. Precise amount of gas applied to the gas pedal. How much brake force is applied to the brake. Where are you steering the vehicle? Uh, what's up ahead of you? You're doing all this over and over and over again and you're doing it without even thinking about it. So that takes a while if you're going to go through normal channels, meaning like, for example, you hear the old saying, if you say it 40 times, you'll remember it forever. I'm not so sure about that. I think a lot of factors come into play. It's what was, what was the setting in which you said it 40 times? What was it that you were saying? Was it easier? Was it complicated? 
But what the point that they're trying to get is, is if you have a stereotyped answer to a stereotyped question or a movement that you do over and over and over and over and over and over again, eventually, and that's the key word eventually, it will then shift and change into procedural memory. Well, by setting the behavior and taking advantage of a natural reflex in those static positions makes that transition from explicit over to procedural, that thing where you say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with procedural. Yeah, I joke about it all the time. I say if the leadership in this country decided today that we got the red lights all screwed up, we need to start going on red and stopping on green. A lot of people who are just learning how to drive, just now learning what the rules of the road are, the young people, they'll fix that because they're still in explicit land. But this old dog here, I'm deep in procedural memory. And therefore, I'm going to inadvertently stop my car every single time that light turns red, no matter how much of a conscious thought I give it. I'm just going to do that same thing over and over again. And you see it all the time in the world of behavior and therapy. People, for example, who have smoked for decades, decades. Well, once they kick the habit of smoking, it's now, what the heck do I do with my hands? My hands keep traveling to my face. My hands keep doing the same thing that they used to do when I would smoke. So what we're gonna do here in training is simply take advantage of that. I want to get to that land a lot faster. It's all called, you know, working smarter, not harder, people. Hey, if, you know, the stress, let's just don't let it be cumulative or pathological. Let's just put some training on the dog. Let the dog learn. Get that thing way over there in procedural land, and then we can move on from there. Okay, so to kind of demonstrate just a little bit here with Captain, and then in a minute here, I'm going to have Joshua bring out a dog that we have here currently going through one of our board and training programs. Her name is Willow, and he'll demonstrate with her. But let me show you a little bit with Captain here. So I'm going to put him on the leash here. Cow dog. Free. Okay, so I'm moving him around, and I'm going to bring him over here and tell him, please, stay. Typical procedure. But now notice I'm pulling on him. Pulling. I'm not correcting. The compression collar is not choking. You see Captain looking at me for direction. But he's fighting it. Wow, look at that. He's fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. That muscle memory, that procedural memory is setting in like a rock. Setting in. You bet. It's wonderful. It really helps the behavior. Remember, I'm trying to get to the land where I tell you place. You just hop on that cot. You don't get off that cot. And you don't even think about it. Same thing for come. I tell you to come. You need to start coming to me. Don't even think about it. There's so many things that you can train your dog to do without giving it a thought. But on those static things that don't require movement like heel, and like some come, you know, unless you're having them stay before you call them, you don't use this technique because it works against you. And movement, two masses of movement want to remain in movement, regardless of what the other one's doing. So that's why we don't do it in movement, physics 101. We are going to take advantage of it in static positions. Free, same thing on a sit. If I bring Captain over here, no, we're not going to do that. Sit, stay, I pull. And when you do this, apply a steady pressure, steady pressure, down, steady pressure, steady, from different angles. Make him fight for this spot. Let up on the pressure. Don't keep it on for two minutes, just only for a few seconds at a time. And the better the dog becomes, the more pressure you can apply. Just don't allow your pressure to ever get to a point that it starts to resemble a correction. I remember years and years ago, pre, when I was going for a certificate in training, we had to place our dogs in downstays outside of a store, a grocery store. They handed us a list and when we received that list, that shopping list, we had to go and shop while our dogs were in downstays. 
And while they were in downstairs, they sent up three strangers to the dog. Not strangers to us, but strangers to the dog. And it was their task to try to pull the dog away from that spot. In other words, attempt to steal your dog. So yeah, opposition reflex works like a champ. And all behaviors that you do, please stay. Just apply a little pressure there. Just lean back on that leash some. Lean back from different angles. Lean a little over here. Lean a little over there. That's all you do. And what you're doing is very quietly, kind of like in a sneaky way, making the dog settle, settle into the position. Free. All righty. So that is known as opposition reflex and setting the behavior. Setting the behavior. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Joshua come out with a dog named Willow, or maybe I'm not. Um, okay, so we're getting a different dog. We're not getting Willow. In fact, I tell you what, uh, is he ready? So apparently Willow needed to go potty in a really bad way. Ah, well, <laughs> there's no using that as an opposite reflex. None whatsoever. You just got to let that thing go. All right, so I'll just keep working just a little bit here while Captain is in the room. Got a dog. Let's do it, buddy. Now, see, if I were to attempt this on a heel, if I were trying to give steady pressure on the heel, what I would end up doing is inadvertently creating a pull so that the dog would end up pulling me. Because, again, as I pull on the heel, I pull back on that heel when the dog's pulling me, then really, in essence, what I'm doing is creating a dog who's going to pull harder because the opposition reflex will kick into high gear during the movement, and the animal will throw its weight into that leash and actually start to pull a lot harder than what it normally would. That's why we correct in a completely different way when we heal animals or we're doing anything that requires movement. Okay, so who do we... Wait a minute, is that not Willow? This is Willow. Okay, so what we got here was the same dog, different handler. Okay, so maybe it's Joshua that had to go to the bathroom. I'm all confused here. So we'll just get it all sorted out here in a real hurry. I got Jake standing on my shoulder back here with Willow. So if you're confused, so am I. But let's don't be confused on what I'm trying to teach today. All right, Jake, demonstrate with Willow, would you please, sir? And there he is, giving a little bit of that force on Willow. Not a correction. She's looking straight ahead, looking around. Not a correction. Just trying to set that behavior. A young dog in training, setting that behavior. Look at her fight for that spot, fight for that spot. All right, let's do her on place. So I'm just trying to move the cot where everybody can see. I'll move out of your way. Little bit of pressure, and look at that. <laughs> so in other words, her way of fighting that pressure there was simply just lie down. In other words, hey, I'm just going to collapse on this cot here, and I'm going to stay right here, and I'm not moving. You can't make me get off. Nice try. Nice try, Jake. I'm not getting off of this cot. Beautiful, beautiful. And of course, like with all training, make sure you reward. Typically, what we'll do is in the beginning, as soon as the dog does a behavior, like a sit, for example, We'll give the reward, and then we'll move into opposition, reflex, and setting the behavior. And that brings me to this point. Do not attempt this on your very first repetitions. Uh, Willow has already done several place repetitions, several sit repetitions, several down repetitions. In other words, we do about 40, 50, somewhere in there, depends on the dog, uh, repetitions. So they're, when they're first learning sit, if a dog's never heard sit, in its life, then remember semiotics. I heard something, sit, from that furless biped. I have no interpretation, so I have a dotted line between my single and my interp interpreter. And then there's a dotted line, of course, between the interpreter and the referent, because I've never done this before, at least not when I heard that signal. So then when you form the dog into the sit, and then reward the sit, in those first repetitions, anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 40, you are in explicit memory land. You're in declarative learning. That's in that land. Now you make a conscious effort. Okay, I heard sit. 
What's my interpretation of the dog? Put my butt on the ground. I need to put my butt on the ground. So the dog consciously makes the effort and puts their butt on the ground. Bingo, they get reward. Now my semiotic triangle is absolutely complete. Solid lines everywhere. I had a signal. I can interpret it as to put my butt on the ground. Why? Because I have a reference. I've done it 40 times before. Only at that point do you now introduce the setting the behavior. Okay, so now I just change the conditions. So when you pull on me, I need to hold this because you pull, I start to move, you say no, you park me back, I start forming another semiotic triangle in a real hurry. And next thing you know, because we're doing this, we're taking advantage of the fact that we're just kind of shoving through the channels of explicit learning all the way to procedural learning. We're just making that thing happen much faster than what it would happen on its own. That's the whole idea. It's just a little bit of speed with hardly any stress to the animal. All right, let's just do one more, Jake, real quick. Free. Good job, Willow Dog. Right. And now he's pulling. So you see with us, we're pulling almost immediately with her, getting her on the cot, just long enough to settle on the cot, and look how quickly she settles. If you watch that, rewind that, man, she dives on that cot, oh, slams on the brakes, and she is settled in. And that's what we want, settled in. Because now we'll be ready for the very next things that's going to start occurring, and that will be big time. <laughs> Woo! Distractions. Ding dong, ring that doorbell. Hey, somebody come over and say, wow, what a cool dog. Can I go pet your dog? And we'll say, yeah. They can pet the dog, but the dog doesn't move, doesn't get off of that cot. Why? Because I'm not even thinking about staying on this cot. I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to give it a conscious effort because I'm not in explicit land. I'm in implicit land. Sweet. That's the best place to ever be. Best place ever when you're trying to create habits that are rock solid. Habits that later on you go, damn, I wish I hadn't taught that. Too late now, man. <laughs> Too late. You already taught it. Better or worse. Okay, guys, that's it for today. So if you have any questions on it, sure, send them to me. Drop them right down there in that thread or send them to Brian with a Y at TamingTheWild.com. And again, if you're confused about anything I've shown on previous videos, because I have danced all over this darn thing. I have been, I just danced all around it, but I have never addressed it directly. And therefore, a couple of viewers were getting a little confused. And I certainly hope that this has cleared up some of that confusion. But I promise you, I've been doing this for decades, this little technique right here. I learned about opposition reflex a long time ago. Learned it about a hard way, but that's a story for another day. If we ever have time, I'll tell it to you. But man, I've been applying it to dog training, and it does work. It truly does. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great training day. Good job, Willow Dog.